Welcome to the official YouTube channel of Fourturnia.com. I'm your host, AJ, and today we're doing an unboxing and a mini review of the Masterverse, Masters of the Universe, New Eternia, Wave 9, Faker. Now, this is the second time that Faker has appeared in Masterverse Plastic, the first time being in 2021 in the Revelation subline. But today, I have these two new Eternia Wave 4 figures adjacent to Faker. On the left, I have the new Eternia Skeletor, otherwise known as Viking Skeletor. And to the right, I have the new Eternia He-Man, otherwise known as Barbarian He-Man. Now, both incarnations of this He-Man and Skeletor exist in the same universe. We got to see them together in this Masterverse Issue 3 comic. And the Masterverse comics is really a story about the nexus of realities, that multiverse, that there's all these different types of He-Man. And the framework of the story is Zodak and Sorceress debating if Prince Adam, as He-Man, is worthy to hold the power. And in one of the stories in this third issue, we see this barbarian He-Man travel to the Isle of Skulls, And that's where he meets this Viking Skeletor. And this Skeletor actually has the Sorceress immobilized. He has the Sorceress trapped. And then through the comic, He-Man debates if he should save the Sorceress. And why I'm bringing up this story and why I think it's relevant is the same universe this new Eternia Skeletor lives in and the same universe that this new Eternia He-Man lives in is the same universe this new Eternia Faker lives in. And how we can tell it is by its packaging. The artwork on the back of the box shows this Viking Skeletor as this Faker's creator, which is pretty cool. Now, before we take a closer look at the Faker packaging, I just want to call everyone's attention to this new attorney at Barbarian He-Man. And if you could tell, he's been kitbashed a little. He has the shield from the Masters of the Universe Revelation He-Man. But more importantly, he has the fur from the Princess of Power Grizzlor. And that's because when I did my last unboxing video featuring Grizzlor, there were a couple people that were curious, some great members in our community, what this Barbarian He-Man would look like with the fur on, like my like in our YouTube comments and Christoph No in our community forum. So here he is, and I think he looks rather good. He looks pretty fantastic. All right, with that said, let's take a closer look at this Faker packaging. So let's get this Faker packaging turned around and check out this fantastic artwork. Once again, the artwork is done by the terrific Amon O'Donohue. We had Amon on our podcast recently, and he actually talked about, he discussed this Faker artwork just a little bit. I, if I recall correctly, he had to redo some of this Faker artwork. Or maybe it's the one on the spine. He said he had to make it more hunched over to make it look more menacing. And he definitely looks more menacing to me. But on the spine here, I love it. You got Faker holding the sword, and uh, you got the, the glare from the sword, and you have Snake Mountain in the back. And then on the back of the box, this is what we were talking about, right? There's Viking Skeletor commanding Faker. And doesn't he look fantastic? And look, we can see his computer panel right behind his armor there. All right, so let's check out this new attorney of bio. It says, Faker, evil robot of Skeletor. His efforts to become the most powerful being in Eternia, Skeletor needed a vessel to harness the power of Grayskull. The evil lord combined mad science and dark magic to create Faker, a being strong enough to contain the energy of the universe and controllable enough to be wielded against his enemies. All right, I think we're done looking at the packaging, and now it's time to get this figure out of the box. So here's the new Eternia Faker Masterverse figure in 360 degrees. And so far, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. I like the blue choice here for the skin color. And I'm loving the purple. And I love these uh, black bootstraps. And with the bracers and the belt, there's uh, like this metal wear. Um, it's silverish. And it's obviously intentional because you can see it in the artwork too. And it looks rather cool. And of course, this pink armor, this pink armor, it's not orange. You know, um, the new Eternia subline is based on old rejected concept art or original designs never used or classic concepts. 
And this pink armor is actually from the old cross sell art. Do you remember the artwork on the vintage box that would show you the other figures that are available? It's kind of like this core wave listed here. Well, in that original Faker cross sell art, the armor wasn't orange, it was pink. But when we got the figures, it had orange armor, you know? But uh, I think in India, they actually got pink armor, but the rest of the world got orange. But so it's reflecting that original cross sell art, which is really cool. All right, so let's take a closer look at this face sculpt. So my first impression with this head is those eyes, you know, those lifeless eyes. This faker doesn't have pupils and they just look white and creepy. He looks undead. He looks like a zombie. Yeah, it's very unsettling. You know, the vintage figure had pupils, but I guess it's emulating the filmation look. If you remember the filmation series, He-Man, the Masters of the Universe, while Faker's skin wasn't blue in that series, his eyes would just glow white. Yeah, maybe they're emulating that. Now let's compare opposing heads in this universe. Here we have the He-Man of this universe and the Faker, and they're clearly different head sculpts. I think they're passable as the same person. You know, it's funny. I, I could see some people complaining, it's got to be the same head sculpt and repainted, you know, even though most of us are usually want a different head sculpt for a different figure. But here it's like, we want the cheap repaint. I could see some people complaining and, and that's fair. Um, but I'm good with this. I think they look close enough. So here's Faker without his armor on, and I really like this look. I actually, I think I prefer this look because we get to see this awesome display panel. And this time it's not a sticker and hopefully it comes across well on camera. This thing is actually sculpted in the chest. You can actually feel the wheels and the buttons. You know, it's always funny. This reminds me of the old tape decks from that old Mission Impossible show where they say, you know, this tape will self-destruct in five seconds and then start smoking. But uh, no, this looks awesome and feels awesome. And then his shoulders, you know, the shoulders, I think, are the same shoulders from Triclops here. Let's do a comparison. You know, Triclops was infected by the Technovirus, the motherboard Technovirus that we believe it's from Hordak. I guess we'll find out in Masters of the Universe Revelation. Yeah, it's the same shoulder. I mean, the bicep sculpt is different. Um, and so is the uh, forearm, but definitely his shoulder has the same sort of... Um, I don't know what that is. Technical uh, bolt? <laughs> I'm not sure what that is, but uh, it definitely looks good on Faker and it feels appropriate. And also on the back, there's these like little gears or something like that. Holes. It almost looks like they could have been holes to actually put like items in, but it's not that deep. So it's just really sculpting here. And it looks like it's some sort of technological enhancement that, or some sort of hookup that Skeletor uses, but uh, it's rather cool. So in regards to Faker's accessories, he comes with two additional hands, a right fist, and a left open hand. And then other than that, he has these two weapons. He has this power sword, and then he has this battle axe. And you can tell the battle axe is the same design as the new Attorney of He-Man battle axe, except this one has battle damage. You can see the notch here, and you can see like the metal skeleton of the battle axe showing within. And it's really cool because it's like saying even the battle axe is a faker. It's not really real. And then this power sword, this is like a total different sculpt. You got the loop handle, which I think is a nod to the vintage power sword. But I really like this. I like that it's different than that because it has all these like metal machine segments to it. It looks like Iron Man armor. And uh, it's really suiting for this figure. And I think it's really cool. It looks really technologically cool. So what do I think of this Masterverse new Attorney of Faker? I think is awesome. Look, what's been the biggest complaint with people who aren't fans of Faker? That Faker was a cheap repaint of He-Man. But not this one here. I mean, he has his own head sculpt here. He has his own sculpted weapons. The battle axe is a new sculpt. The power sword is a new sculpt. And the chest, that computer panel, is not a sticker. But that thing is legitimately sculpted and painted. Any of the complaints that have been like tossed at Faker before has been resolved with this Masterverse figure. And it's brilliant because of it. Faker fans, 
should rejoice. I think this is a terrific figure. Sure, you can have some minor gripes. You can wish that the chest was maybe bigger. Or maybe it was the 40th anniversary buck or something like that. But I think this is overall really a terrific faker. And it should please faker fans and non-faker fans alike. And this is worthy to add to your Masterverse collection. So that's it. I want to thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time.